Hi everyone and welcome back, I hope you're well. I know that it's been a fair few months since I last uploaded a video. Life has been so crazy busy for me. Connor and I got engaged at the beginning of November and I think I'm gonna do a wedding series because being a newly engaged woman, that seems to be all that I watch on YouTube. So to be able to have my own and kind of document the whole preparation process ahead of my wedding is just something which I find really cool and I hope you guys will enjoy that. I started working for Mac. I'm been working for them for around about nine weeks now and I've got my brush belt. This was given to me on my first day and when I looked um, for like MAC brush belts or what makeup artists carry, like the type of brushes that they carry around with them, there was nothing really that came up on YouTube so I'm doing this in the hope that if you have just started working for MAC or a similar makeup company or whether maybe you're a freelancer and you're kind of looking at what brushes to keep with you in a brush belt or maybe just for personal use perhaps you are really into makeup and you're kind of wanting to invest into makeup brushes or mac brushes but don't really know where to start this is going to be really helpful for you and i'll tell you everything that you need to know get into the brushes individually i thought i would just talk to you a little bit about the belt itself i believe you can pick this up in mac pro store this is what the brush belt looks like it's very comfortable, I'm sure most of you are very familiar with this if you kind of go into any MAC stores. I've had this on for like 9 hours straight and it's never given me any backache or felt really uncomfortable. Straps are showing no sign of wear, they're really nice comfortable good quality straps that just click in around the back and it looks like this. One thing that I would point out though is because the, I'm going to call it leather because I'm not sure what it is but it feels like leather to me and I'm a bit uneducated in terms of like fabrics and stuff. It's very soft which I mean personally I quite like that lived in more like rugged feeling to the makeup belt but you can see down here that and I'll probably maybe insert a close-up because I'm not sure how well it's picking it up on camera but there are some scratches and some dents and it's just looking a little bit battered down by here. Um, and also it's really flimsy at the top and one thing that I would say if you are particularly short like I am I'm around about 5'1", 5'2 on a push I say 5'1 and a half to get that extra little bit of height but when I'm reaching in for products or like powders or lipsticks or whatever um, I've noticed that when I bend my torso it also bends the front of the belt which then makes the brushes look a little bit the actual brush hairs just stick out a little bit and I don't really like that look so now I kind of wear either my brush belt on my side or I'll wear it cross body just because I obviously want to protect the investment of my brushes and I want it to look presentable I don't who wants horrible brushes in their brush belt okay so now I'm going to show you where I tend to like lay out my brushes so the top left hand as I'm looking so this side here this is where I keep all my foundation brushes and my concealer brushes, just brushes which I feel like I reach for most often, so that for me is foundation and concealer. And I also like to kind of categorise them differently. So from left to right, I keep all my duo fibre brushes, then the pointed foundation brush, then the concealer brushes, and then the top right, so this side here, I tend to keep like my bronzer brushes, powder brushes, blusher brushes, at the back so face brushes are on the back row and then at the front are like miscellaneous smaller brushes so eyeliner brushes um eyebrow brushes and obviously eyeshadow brushes are along the top here and then it also comes with a couple of big pockets which to be honest i mean you could prob they are pretty huge pockets but i tend to just keep the lipstick that i'm wearing that day so for me it's the riri hearts mac um bad girl riri lipstick which is a bit naughty because it's obviously a limited edition collection but I love the colour and it's very similar to a couple of the nudes that we have at the moment um, and then I keep like little sample pots so this is a sample of a foundation which I'm trying out um, it's I think it's the MAC Pro Longwear Waterproof which side note I'm obsessed with it's really good um, but the little sample pots look like this and I tend to keep a few, I mean I don't know whether I've got any in here, I probably don't, but um, I tend to keep a couple of empty ones just in case someone just wants a sample to take away with them. It saves me going to the sample drawers or whatever. And then on the other side, I just keep sample stickers just, again, to make sure that everyone knows what shade they are. And then I also have, which I've taken from the store, these are little disposable spatulas because MAC is so hot on hygiene um, and obviously 
making sure that everything's sanitised correctly. I just keep these in with me for people who have like the Studio Tech Cream Foundation or perhaps a moisturiser. And then along the front, I tend to keep this quite bare just because I don't want to overload my brush belt. But I noticed that a couple of the girls have little travel size bottles that they keep in here. So they'll have a travel size brush cleaner or alcohol. I tend to only have like a antiseptic gel. It's the Bath and Body Works Georgia. I have Georgia. I was about to say Georgina Peach. Georgia Peach. So now that I've been through the brush belt, let's talk about the brushes that I have inside. So foundation brushes, for example. Um, I know that I've briefly talked that I have three duo fibres and one normal foundation brush. My favourite are the duo fibre brushes, just because I feel like you can customise them a little bit more. The pointed foundation brush comes with the kit, so it comes with the brush belt on your first day of work. Although I don't reach for it all that regularly, what it's great for is... Um, asking a client what they use to apply their foundation so rather than say are you using like a duo fiber brush or like another brush you can actually point to which one and nine times out of ten they will say this brush i use it as like a reference point more than anything or perhaps customers who just want a foundation and they want to see how the foundation pairs with the brush that they already have i will use this brush on them but nine times out of ten as i said i will use the duo fibers the first one is the 187. Again, this comes with your brush belt as well. This is the largest duo fibre that MAC sells, I believe. Um, duo fibre just means that it's a mixture of synthetic hair and natural goat hair. This is great because you can use it on liquid and cream products as well as powders. So you can almost do like your whole face with this. It's amazing for people who want to top up on the go because it's so huge, you can literally just do 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 and then you're done. I prefer the 188 which is the sister of the 187, you can see the size here. Um, the 188 is a lot smaller but I prefer it because I feel like it's more precise and I feel like it gets more into like the nooks and the crannies of the face, so around the nose, in between like the corner of the eye. Out of all the duo fibres that I have in my brush belt, I recommend the 130 the best. They're two a kabuki brush. I just think that it applies foundation so much nicer than the 188 because it's a lot denser and um, the bristles like all line up the same. I mean it's very similar to a kabuki brush but because it has natural hair it's not going to apply foundation as full coverage as a kabuki brush if that makes sense. I'm not too good at explaining but I hope you're still with me. In the brushes I tend to have three. Um, one of which comes with the kit, which is this one here, and it's the MAC 252. I believe the number's all scratched off. What I love about this is that it's not only good for sort of packing on concealer underneath the eyes, but because it's so big, what I quite like to do is um, use it with paint pots, so something like soft ochre or painterly, or any of the paint pots really. It's huge, so you can almost cover your whole eyelid with just like one sweep. Also have the MAC 287. It's duo fiber, works the same way as the duo fiber foundation. This is brilliant for like a light coverage if you are one of those people who tends to be a little bit heavy handed with your concealer, or perhaps you're worried about your concealer creasing. This would be one for you because it picks up products so lightly. Also brilliant for nose contour, which is really random, but because it's so thin at the ends, you can really almost get into the sides of your nose um, and, and kind of blend out any contour. The final one and my personal favourite for concealer is the MAC 286. I love how the brush is tapered so it comes to like a really thin point. Um, I'd probably recommend out of all the other concealer brushes to use this one because it's so universal and also because it's so soft and just the shape of it. I mean, you can use these brushes in any way you want. Just because I'm using this as a concealer brush, you can use it as an eye brush. It would be really cool as like a crease brush to help blend out eyeshadow. You could even probably use it as like a highlighting brush or even like a really defined contour. I mean, makeup is all in reference. So just because I'm using it for one thing doesn't mean you need to. And if you find something that you love, use it for that. But I love this one for concealer. Right, so moving on to this side, I have two of the, I think these are called the 129 brushes. You get one in your kit, but I bought another one because I use these so regularly. Um, nine times out of ten I found that this, the one on its own would just be dirty, and then I'd have to waste time, you know, washing it with brush cleaner or sanitising it, and I just thought two is just easier. Plus, you can use one for powder, one for um, brush, brusher. You can use one for powder, one for blusher. We also have the Angles brush. This is the MAC 168, I want to say. I 
We'll have to leave all the brushes down below because they've all scratched off. This is really great for contour because it's slightly angled and the brushes are also at an angle so they're all different lengths. It makes applying bronzer really nice and natural. Um, personally, I don't reach for it that often, but what I do quite like to use as well is if my 129s are both dirty, I will apply this with blusher because I love to apply blusher on a diagonal. And then last but not least is the MAC 135. This is the one that I actually picked up in Venice. Um, I had this on recommendation from Jacqueline Hill. What I love about it and what she loved about it was for bronzing, but I guess it's so big you can almost use it for anything. But because it's so tapered, you can kind of turn it on its side and do your blush, uh, you can turn it on its side and do your bronzer and then turn it the other way and almost blend, blend it out. Okay, and then last but not least is like this row here. So I have the MAC 224 which comes with uh, your brush belt. What I love about this is that it's really great as a transitional colour or for blending an eye look out if you're using a smoky eye. I also love using this as a cheek highlight. I think it's the perfect size. It makes the cheek highlight apply precisely, but because it's so like fluffy, it doesn't apply it too harshly, if that makes sense. It's precise, but it's not harsh. And then next to it, I have the MAC 234. This is brilliant because it's um, duo-sided, so you can kind of pack on colour on one side and then blend it out through the other. This is amazing and I'll use this for people who have just started out with eye looks and they don't want to overload themselves with brushes. I will reach for this one but it's also amazing for concealer because you can pack it on on one side and then use the like darker hair to like blend it out and make sure that everything like is nice and smooth. Then we have my blending brushes. So this is what I would use predominantly for eye brushes although the 217 works amazing for concealer brush as well. I have three of the 217s because I use them all the time. I think they are the most amazing brush that MAC sells and if you have like a budget of just one brush, go with the 217 because you can really use it for so many different looks. My favourite look is to blend out eyeshadow. So I would go in with a smoky eye, I'd first go in with the 224 just as a transition colour and then if I want to be more precise with darker colours or again to blend a whole look together, I would then use the 217 to make sure that everything runs into each other and it's not choppy and everything just blends nicely. And then one of my newest purchases that I've bought is the MAC 221. This is like the little baby sister of the 217, it's so cute! And what I love about it is that it's so tapered, so if you want to do a really nice cut crease or you've got really small eyelids, use this one because it's so um, tapered it's going to be really precise and you can carve yourself a crease if you don't have one at all but if you also want to be really dramatic this one is amazing and I'm going to invest in more because I use it all the time. For lid colours I really only have two. The first one's the 239 and the difference between one is one's natural, one's synthetic. The 239 is brilliant if you want like an everyday kind of neutral smoky eye or you just want like a little wash of colour. Because it's natural it's going to soak up product so it's going to lay it out more sheerer. If you use something like the MAC 242, it's synthetic, it's not going to grab hold of the product, it's literally just going to hold it on and then push it down whenever you need it. Those who want the 242, I would probably recommend them with pigments. We had the Magic of the Night collection come out for Christmas and they had the most gorgeous four um, pigment set. I think there was like a gold, a blue and perhaps a purple. Amazing, you've got three pigments and a glitter and I used to apply every one with the 242 because it just makes it so easy. Spray your brush with Fix Plus, go in with the pigment, put it on your eye, amazing. It, whereas if I kind of went in with the 239, this one here, even with Fix Plus, because it's natural, it's going to take a while to build up the colour. So if you want dramatic look, 242, natural, 239. In this pouch here, I keep like um, eye liner, lower lash line colours, that something like this. So I keep the 219. Sorry, this one came with the brush belt. Oh, and I forgot to mention, one of the 217s comes with the brush belt, and so does the 239. But you, I bought the 242, the 221, and the duo sided brush separate. Pencil brush is amazing, obviously you all know what pencil brush does. If you want to pack on a dark colour in the outer corner, this is the brush to do it. If you want to smoke anything underneath the lower lash line, this is also the brush to do it. What I love pairing is these two together, but the 212, which is the flat definer brush, 
This is amazing if you want to like clean up any winged eyeliner or if you want to pack on colour on the lower lash line or even blend out some of your like pencil eyeliner on the top corner. This is amazing to do it with. What I love doing is putting down like the darkest colour with the 212 and then going in with the 219 with a like a more lighter transitional colour just to blend it out to make it really grungy and smoky. I think these two pair amazingly. And then we have the MAC 214 which is like a short shader brush. This again is really good for making everything blend together nicely, um, especially with eyeliner. In actual fact, I probably use these two for more lower lash line and this one for on top. The last pocket here is where I kind of keep all my smaller brushes. So I have two liner brushes, the 209 which comes with the brush belt and the 210 which I bought separately. The 210 is a lot thinner, you're going to get a lot more of a precise line to it. It's the 266, it comes with your brush belt. Um, I think I'm just going to write a list of what comes with the brush belt because I sound like such an idiot. This comes with the brush belt, this you buy separately. It's like, who really cares, really? Um, the 266, I use this all the time for eyebrows. I personally really like, unless people struggle with eyebrows and they want a really dramatic brow, I love applying shadow um, to the eyebrow, I feel like it's the most natural, especially on younger. I also, and I don't know whether I mentioned this, but I tend to keep this row down here blank because this is where I would keep my dirty brushes just to stop cross-contamination. MAC is really big on hygiene. So that marks the end of my brush belt. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry if this looks like a long one and I will be back with a new video very shortly. Bye bye!